Hey there, and welcome back to video number three now. So I am working on a series of videos in this playlist that's all focused on helping teachers make small incremental changes in their classroom to align more of their instruction with the science of reading research. But I wanna do it in such a way that it's not overwhelming and you don't feel stressed about it and overwhelmed about it. And there's just one more thing to add to your plate because I know very well you've got just too much on your plate already. So what I want to do is I want to make the science of reading research easy, digestible. I want you to be able to take this information quickly and just very easily tomorrow go into your classroom and be able to implement these tiny little shifts that will reap huge rewards in the long in the long run. So before you get into this video, if you haven't seen the first three videos, the first one is called Shame on You Teachers, but not shame on you in a bad way. <laughs> so make sure you watch that first video. First, uh, that first video, the, fir the second video was the first shift, small shift that we can make in our instruction to help us move more towards the science. And that was talking about to quotable readers. The second shift was about changing our, our prompts and our cues when students come to words they don't know in books that they're reading and the instruction that you're doing. So I want us to make some small incremental changes in the words that we're using and the prompts that we're using with children when they get stuck on a word and get rid of the three cueing system. That's the goal here is to start changing the way we teach and the way we prompt students by making these small incremental changes that moves us towards the science of reading. So that was shift number two. Now in this video, we're gonna focus on shift number three. I'm gonna to talk to you about that in a second, but if you're new here, my name is Anna DeGilio. I was a primary teacher for 24 years in education for 28 years and I am all about just helping teachers. I want to help you and give you the tap the tactics and the strategies and the tips, everything to help you make your job a little bit easier and help your children learn to read. That's my goal. It's always been my goal. It's my mission and that's why I'm here. So if you are interested in videos like this, please click that subscribe button and that little bell next to it so you're alerted every time one of my new videos goes live. So let's jump into shift number three. So I already talked about the first shifts that we need to make. Now shift number three is all about explicit and systematic. And we hear those words thrown around, you know, it's always buzzwords, new buzzwords are always coming in, right? So the buzzwords now are explicit and systematic. But to be honest, I don't think they're just buzzwords. I think they're super important to our instruction and to guide our instruction. So when we talk about explicit, explicit just means how, it just means how we teach and what activities we do to teach the skills. And systematic means when, it means when and in what order we teach skills. That's all those two words mean, how and basically when and in what order. So the third shift I was hoping that you could start implementing slowly into your classroom is shifting and having more of a solid scope and sequence for what you teach in your small group instruction. Now, we should absolutely be bringing in phonics instruction and decoding and encoding into our small group reading instruction through the use of decodable books for students that are reading around levels A through F ish. I say ish because I believe that. So I believe taking children that are in kindergarten and, for, and beginning of first grade that are reading on levels A through F and we start using, moving away from leveled readers for those children from levels A through F ish and change to decodable readers. After level F and G, a leveled reader is simply a book. Leveled readers are not evil. Leveled readers aren't terrible. After a certain level, they're just books. But unfortunately, the word leveled readers are getting a bad rap for some reason. I don't know why. It's a book. I mean, you go into, you, you go into any classroom library, those are all just books. And some of them happen to be leveled and some of them happen to not be leveled. A book is a book. It doesn't matter if it's leveled or not. After level F, G-ish, it's just a book. It doesn't matter if it's leveled. So leveled readers are not evil. It's just we don't want to use the leveled readers with the children that are learning the English code. So we want to swap out our levels A through F and move to the decodable readers. 
after level F, you can bring those leveled readers back in if they're mastering the code already, if they know the 44 sounds of the English language and can easily use those sounds in their reading and apply those sounds that they've now mastered that they can then apply it to their reading and know what the word is. That's what I'm saying. So let's move away from leveled readers for A through F. After F, leveled readers are fine. They are just books. Okay. All right. So scope and sequence, we need an explicit and systematic scope and sequence. Now, what does that mean? I have a scope and sequence that we created for our structured literacy with ease program. It's part of guided readers. It comes part of your membership if you want it, but I am giving you this scope and sequence for free. You don't have to buy guided readers if you don't want to, because my goal in life is to help teachers. Yes, I have a business. I, that's the, there's no, <laughs> I'm not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. I have a business, right? But I also believe in helping teachers. I've been doing that for 10 years online. So w this scope and sequence you can download and it's free and you could then follow it. So the way we organized our scope and sequence is a couple of different, a couple of different ways. Number one, we're very, very explicit and systematic in how we introduce the letters of the alphabet and the 44 sounds in the English language. It's very systematic. So not only does our scope and sequence um, introduce, of course, the 26 letters and their sounds, but then it goes further and then continues to teach the students the 44 sounds in the English language. But in our structured literacy program, we also not only include the isolated sounds that we need to learn of those 44 English sounds, but we also include spelling rules, like rules that we need to teach for spelling because spelling is super important. And when we use spelling in our writing, that's encoding, right? Decoding. Now writing, taking speech to print is encoding. So it's important that children understand and learn the spelling rules. So those are also embedded into the structured literacy with ease program. And the next thing we have to teach is syllable rules and syllable division. So that's also part. So when students get to a certain part uh, or a certain set of sounds that they know and they've mastered, for example, You've taught all 26 letters of uh, the alphabet, and they know all those sounds, including the short vowels. You can then teach, you could teach the first syllable pattern, which are closed syllables, because they are typically CBC words, um, and you can teach a closed syllable. So then you can teach that syllable lesson, which is a syllable rule. So what we do is as we continue introducing new sounds, right, we then introduce the syllable division rule and the syllable, um, uh, the syllable types, right? Because we have, we have syllable types and syllable division rules. So as you go further down the scope and sequence, you could then start adding in lessons and be very intentional about the lessons you do teaching syllable division and syllable rules. Okay, so that's how our scope and sequence works. And then as we get a bit, little bit later on in the program, more towards uh, the second grade, uh, the second grade and third grade skills, Again, we don't level this based on grade level. Our structured literacy with ease is not about grade levels. It's about skill ability because that's what structured literacy needs to be. It needs to be flexible based on skill ability of students, what they've mastered and what they've ha they haven't mastered. So then we get into prefixes and suffixes. So we also bring that into our instruction as well through phonics and reading. So not only are we teaching the isolated sounds and the 44 sounds of the English language, we're also including spelling rules, we're including, including syllable uh, types and division rules, and then we're also including affixes. So that's how our scope and sequence is broken up. So if you need a scope and sequence and you are, don't know where to find one because your district doesn't have one and you're interested in, in bringing more of a systematic approach into your instruction, head over to Guided Readers, scroll down a little bit right under our Structured Literacy with Ease and you can download for free our entire scope and sequence and use it. 
You don't have to be a customer of Guided Readers if you don't want to, because we're about helping teachers and helping children learn to read. So go download this and you have a solid scope and sequence that you could now start to follow so students can master the code. So that's really, it's, this is going to be a quick video because that's a, uh, uh, shift number three is about having a solid scope and sequence that's explicit and systematic and that's what this is now the explicit part <laughs> systematic remember was the when and the and and the when when you teach it right and in what order that's systematic that's what's here now the explicit part of it is actually the <laughs> the curriculum itself so if you were thinking about joining guided readers uh this is just an example of, of sequence one i just bound it because it was just easier for me to show um but sequence one um this is sequence one in our our program and we go step by step by step by step by step for everything you need to teach to absolutely align your practices, the science of reading and uh, structured literacy. So download the scope and sequence for free and use it. Start implementing it in your classroom. But if you want now the explicit part of it where I show you how to teach each lesson step by step by step by step to get your students to become amazing readers that have learned the code and that use decodable readers because every single lesson in our program contains a decodable book that spirals and scaffolds because that's what you have to do. So what's interesting about our program is that we believe high frequency words are super important, but we don't believe in memorization of high frequency words. So in our program, we have something called a readiness sequence. And in this readiness sequence, what we're doing is we're giving students a solid foundation of words, 109 words to be exact, that will give them what they need to have a strong foundation to start reading decodable books. The best part about these 109 words is that only 33 of them are irregular. Only 33. So out of 109, only 33 of these words are irregular, which is about 28%. So let's just do round numbers. 25% of the words are, are irregular and might only be one part that's irregular. One part of the word could be irregular. Other parts can be totally, absolutely decoded because they're regular sounds. And the rest of them, so the 75% of the rest of the, these words are completely decodable and follow the 44 sounds of the English language. So that's why in Structured Literacy with Ease, not only do we start with the sound sequence because that introduces that introduces all 26 letters of the alphabet and the sounds after the sound sequence we move to the readiness sequence which is about high frequency words but are we memorizing these words no 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 <laughs> and i'm going to get that actually i'm going to get into this a little bit more into the next video we don't memorize them and that's going to be the next video we're going to talk about high frequency words in the next video but i wanted to show you how we do things in structured literacy with ease so with that being said head over to guidedreaders.com. You're gonna, first part is all about our Structured Literacy with Ease program. Scroll down a little bit more, and I want you to write there, just put in your name and email, and you can download our entire scope and sequence for free. Free, 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 free. You don't have to be a customer. You can download it for free and start utilizing it in your classroom tomorrow, and start making the small shifts. That's what this whole video series is about, is about making small, tiny shifts in your instruction that follow the science of reading and the research on how the brain learns, learns to read. But we're, the way we're, we're going to do it is we're going to be very intentional about it and we're going to be meticulous and we're going to be thoughtful and we're going to do this in a way that doesn't make us feel overwhelmed number one. And number two, we're not going to feel shamed by anyone on the internet, most importantly also. <laughs> so if you didn't watch video number one on shame on you teachers, please watch that because it's an important message I'd like to really convey to the teachers that 
that follow me and that are in my community. I am all about helping you learn the research and make these small incremental changes until you're ready to go all in with structured literacy. So these tiny little shifts are those shifts that are going to ultimately get you to a solid structured literacy philosophy in your classroom, but by making little shifts along the way. This is not, again, I hate the saying, uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. I just absolutely hate that saying, but that's literally what it is. We're not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. We're going to make small incremental changes that are going to reap huge benefits for your students, but we're going to need to do it very meticulously and be intentional about how we do it. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you be intentional, learn the research, learn how to implement these pieces into your instruction slowly as we get there, right? That's what it's about. It's about making small incremental changes that will reap huge, huge benefits in your classroom. So this was shift number three. Shift number three is about utilizing a very solid and explicit and systematic scope and sequence. And you can download this for free at guidedreaders.com and you can follow the scope and sequence on your own. Now, again, if you want the explicit part, you gotta just join Guided, Guided Readers and then you can get every single solitary lesson that is explicitly taught in our program. It follows the science of reading to a T. There is no three queuing in this system. There are no leveled readers in this system. They are decodable books that spiral and scaffold in skills that allow students to continue to build upon a solid foundation of phonological and phonemic awareness until they learn the 44 sounds of the English language and then bridge the gap to helping children read for meaning. The goal of structured literacy is to get them to learn the code and master the code, not just have exposure to the code, master the code, and then once that code is mastered, move them and bridge that gap into reading for meaning. That is the goal of reading. So head on over to Guide to Readers, download your scope and sequence for free, and start making some small incremental changes in your classroom. And if you found this video helpful, I would be so appreciative if you could share this out on your social media channels and with your school and with your admin, because let's do this together as a community of teachers and feel empowered by the changes that we need to make to align ourselves with the research. That's what this is about. That's what I'm about. And I hope, I hope I could help you on your journey to do that. All right, thanks so much for watching everybody. I will see you in the next video because we've got a lot more to share. Bye for now.